بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعواني وأنصاره Today we commemorate the birth anniversary of Lady Fatima to Zahra, may peace be with her. And we offer our congratulations to Imam Mahdi Jalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif and to Lady Ma'suma. And we pray that inshallah in the remaining part of this day, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would bless us by accepting our du'as and by forgiving our sins and by increasing our love and knowledge of the lady Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Alaiha. We've been reflecting on the hadith of Imam Qazim Alayhi Salam about reason and inshallah I want to make a connection to the Lady Fatima as well. If you remember, we discussed this part of the Hadith in the previous session that Imam said, those who are intelligent, those who think, those who reflect, they never go after dunya because they know that Dunya is something which has the least value and significance in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that soon is going to perish, something which is going to expire. Therefore, they prefer to have more focus on the hereafter and on gaining things like wisdom, which even if you have been given a little, it's an abundant good. Then Imam says, Ya Hisham, in al aqil nadara ila dunya wa ila ahliha. A person who is understanding and thinking and reflecting looks at dunya and the people who are working for dunya. He doesn't just go through the things without reflection. You know, sometimes people just do things without understanding, without thinking. Even, for example, there are people who study for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They don't have any plan, any idea why they are studying the thing, what they want to achieve. They just follow other people. A person of understanding always thinks about what he himself does and what other people are doing and wants to take lessons. These people are the people who look at dunya and the people of dunya and they realize that what they want to achieve needs a struggle, needs efforts. Even in dunya, you cannot become successful without struggling and making efforts. If you look at people who are, for example, rich, it's not that they necessarily got it from their father as you know, inheritance. Many of these people who are rich, they have really struggled. They started with being a small, for example, you know, servant in a shop. Gradually, they worked hard day and night. So they reach this point. If there are people who are, for example, in the political, for example, fields and they have achieved you know, some position in some parts of the world, they have worked for it very hard. For years they have worked, you know, they started being a simple member in a party, then you know, gradually they are you know, promoted and maybe it takes them 10, 20, 30 years till they are established. Or if they are, for example, people who are, for example, 
I don't know, for example, top wrestlers or swimmers or, you know, players of football. These are the people who really work hard. They have to have very fixed, you know, routine every day, how many times they have, you know, to exercise. They are very careful about their food. They have to put lots of pressure on themselves. So even dunya cannot be achieved without making efforts. لا تنال إلا بالمشقة والنظر إلى الآخرة فعلم أنها لا تنال إلا بالمشقة The same is for Akhira. There is no easy solution, neither for dunya nor Akhira. For dunya, you have to make efforts. For Akhira, you have to make efforts. لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are people who work for dunya and they make efforts for that. There are people who work for Akhira and make efforts for that. من أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها. There are people who want dunya and they do sigh for dunya. So without making efforts, you cannot achieve anything. If we want to be lazy, we cannot do anything. Okay. So we have to do some real, you know, work so that we can achieve something. Now, if I am agil, if I am a person who thinks. If I am an intelligent person, I say, okay, I certainly make efforts, but I will make efforts for something that can remain longer, something which is more fruitful and more endurable, something that instead of helping me for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, can help me forever. So Imam says, فَتَلَبَ بِالْمَشَقَّةِ أَبْقَاهُمَا they consider both groups of people and then they decide to make efforts for something that can remain longer, which is much better. It's not very difficult to understand, but it's very difficult to commit ourselves. Otherwise, I think every child would understand that it's much better to work for something that can remain Langer. Ya Hisham, in al Ogala Zahidu fit dunya, Varagibu fil Akhira. The people of understanding, the people of thinking, they show little interest in dunya, but they have great interest in the hereafter. You know, Zohd, if it is used with fi, means having no interest. Kanu fi hemenaz zahidin means they didn't have any appreciation. Zahida feshay means you have no interest. You don't want it. These people are the people who don't want dunya. They don't have interest in dunya, but they have lots of interest in the hereafter. Why? لأنهم علموا أن الدنيا طالبة مطلوبة والآخرة طالبة مطلوبة. Because they know both this world and the hereafter, they are wanted and they want you. They are demanded and they demand. Both of them. They are wanted. It's clear. There are people who want dunya, there are people who want akhira. So both of them are matloob. But both of them also are talib. They demand. If you are a person who wants akhira, then dunya wants you. Dunya comes after you. And dunya says, you must enjoy me and benefit from what I have. So it's not that the one who works for Akhira would not be able to enjoy from dunya. He would have food, he would have drink, he would have family, he would have friendship, he would go for sightseeing and so on and so forth. He enjoys because dunya comes after him. And if you go after dunya, 
akhirah comes after you in the sense that your death comes to you. You cannot run away from death. You don't run away from dunya, you don't run away from death. So, it's better if you work for akhirah and dunya comes after you, rather than working for dunya and being surprised by your death. You invest everything on dunya, you have nothing saved for akhirah, and your death comes and surprises you. And you know, for death to come and surprise you, it doesn't need to come when you are young. Maybe you are 100% years old and you are surprised by your death. When you are not ready for something, when you are not prepared for something, it's a surprise. Maybe a person is 20 years old and ready for his death, so he's not surprised. Maybe a person is 100 years old and he's surprised. It's a matter of how much you are thinking and preparing yourself for your death. So Imam says, فَمَنْ طَلَبَ الْآخِرَةِ طَلَبَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا حَسْتَّ يَسْتَوْفِيَ مِنْهَا رِزْقَهُ The one who seeks Akhira, dunya comes after him and says, you know, you have certain thing to enjoy. There is a fixed sustenance for you in dunya. You have to gain it before you go to Akhira. So dunya comes after you. وَمَنْ طَلَبَ الدُّنْيَا طَلَبَتْهُ الْآخِرَةِ فَيَأْتِيهِ الْمَوْتِ But the one who is after dunya, then death comes to him. فَيُفْسِدُ عَلَيْهِ دُنْيَاهُ وَآخِرَتَهُ Death comes to him while he is not ready, so he would not enjoy dunya anymore, and he is not going to enjoy akhirah because he is not ready for that. This is the problem. Because I want to shift to the discussion about Lady Fatima to Zahra, I don't have time to explain this point further. Just very quickly. This is part of the picture. That when you work for Akhira, dunya comes to you because there is a fixed sustenance for you already decided and measured by God you have to benefit from. There is also another dimension. I think in many cases your success in dunya comes when you show no interest to dunya. If you are a person who is interested even in worldly success, you cannot become necessarily successful by always thinking about that. You know, I have experienced myself whether for myself or other people. For example, there are people who are very good managers, very good leaders of a community. But part of their success lies in the fact that they never wanted to be in this position. You know, if I want to be a good manager, I want to be a leader, I want to be you know, successful in any social, political field, then I become frightened. I don't want to take any risk. I want always to compromise and please people. Then I cannot be that active. But when I am in a position and I don't have any personal interest in that position, I am not worried. Therefore, I take all the risks. I'm not worried that tomorrow they are going to, dis you know, to uh, misplace me or you know, to miss me. No. For me, this position is not important. But if I am attached to this position and I want to preserve it, then I become very conservative. I become too cautious and I never can bring any change and any progress. So this is also another dimension of this point that when you are not interested in dunya, indeed you become more successful in dunya. Now I want to shift to a discussion which is very important about the significance of this calculus, this measurement of dunya and akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a covenant with his prophets and with his chosen servants with awliya. 
In the beginning of dua in nudba, in the second line, we say, Allahumma lakal hamdu ala ma jara bihi qawa'uk fi awliya'ik. O oh Allah, all the praise is due to you for what your decree for what your decree your qaza has brought out for your friends jara bihi qawauk fi awliyaik so it's a decree of allah it's a fi final and firm decision of allah this is something that has happened for all the friends of god What has happened? What was the qaza? What was the firm decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Alladheena stakhlastahum lenafsika wa deenik. Those of them that you have chosen them and purified them for yourself and for your religion. This is very important. What I am going to mention is something that Allah has planned for the people who want to be religious leaders, who want to be guides for mankind, who want to become prophets and imams and hujjah of Allah for people. Istakhlastahum lenafsika wa dinik. They are chosen for God and for religion of God. So they are not just some good individuals who live in isolation from society. They have a religious leadership role. When you chose for them, اختيار means to choose something over another thing, to prefer something over another thing. Allah chose for his friends the blessing which is remaining. Naim al muqim something which remains, something which doesn't expire. Alladhi la zawala lahu wa lazm ihlal. It's not going to expire, it's not going to end. Allah has preferred for them to have this type of enjoyment. La zawala lahu wa lazm ihlal. But didn't Allah give them this just freely? Did Allah just said, okay, I have decided for you to enjoy Akhirah? No. After Allah made a decision for them to enjoy everlasting blessings of Allah, but after asking them to promise something. Allah said, you must promise. There's a condition that you must not go after dunya. You must renunciate from worldly pleasure in all its ranks. Sometimes you can avoid some levels of dunya, but other levels of dunya is very difficult. You know, for example, the things which are attractive for the young children. You know, toys and chocolate and biscuits and ice cream. Maybe as a teenager, you can easily avoid them. But for you as a teenager, there is another element in dunya and worldly life that you cannot avoid. To mix with your friends, to enjoy being, you know, with them outside, to decorate yourself, you know, to have good dress. These are the things that are difficult for you to avoid. When you go higher, you may avoid these things, but you want respect in the society, you want position, you want people to praise you. So, dunya has many different levels. And it is only when you can get rid of attachment to all these levels of dunya that you are really free because it's not important whether you are chained up in your neck on your feet when you are chained up you cannot move it doesn't make difference you say oh i am chained up in my neck not in my feet okay 
What's the difference? At the end, you cannot move. So, fi darajat dunya they have to be dismissing and avoiding dunya in all its ranks. Okay, this was a condition. Fasharatu laka dalik. And they kept this promise. They didn't just say yes, but later they did something else. No. They said yes, and they kept their promise because we say, Fasharatu laka dalik wa alimta minhumul wafa'abi. They said yes, and they were honest. They were loyal. They kept their promises. So what happened? Fakabiltahum. Then you accepted them. Sometimes you think of acceptance of a'mal, which is very important, but more important than acceptance of a'mal is acceptance of people. Fakabiltahum means you are entirely accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just your action. Allah loves you in your entirety, not just loves some good qualities or good actions of you. Fakabiltahum waqarrabtahum and then you made them muqarrab, you brought them nearer to you. Waqaddamta lahumu dhikr al-ali wa thana al-jali. And then, right from that time, not after they become mature, not after they become 30, 40 years old, not even after they are born, right from that time, you elevated them. You raised their name. You ask everyone to remember them by high esteem. Because Allah knows everything in advance. Allah knows who is going to become a good person. Allah knows who is going to keep his promise. Allah, Allah already knows whether me or you are going to keep our promise or not. This doesn't mean we are forced. We are not forced. We have full control. But everything is known to Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that I am going to be a good person, he would accept me even before I have actually reached that point in my life. فَقَبِلْتَهُمْ وَقَرَّبْتَهُمْ وَقَدَّمْتَ لَهُمُ الذِّكْرَ الْعَلِيهِ Allah supports such people. Allah doesn't let these people to do anything bad, anything wrong, even in their childhood. Allah even doesn't let their parents to do something wrong because this person in future is going to become a role model for others. There must be nothing dark in his life. Allah doesn't let even this person to be born into a family which is for example addicted and drug dealer and so on and so forth. Although this is not affecting the piety of the person but because this person is going to become role model so everything must be something that would leave no excuse for people to say, I don't want to follow this person because he has such a bad history in himself or in his family or in his group. So these people are the people who have been designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become guides for people, hujja of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they have promised to Allah and they have shown in their life that they kept this promise. So Allah helped them and supported them so that they can help and benefit other people. Then we say, فَبَعْضٌ أَسْكَنْتَهُ jannatak. One of them was Adam. One of them was Musa. One of them was Nuh. One of them was Isa. That because Allah had a great plan for Isa, awlattahu min ghayr ab. Even the birth of Isa was special. Why? Because Isa is going to be a very special person in future, voluntarily, not by force. 
Allah knows that how pious Isa is, how much zuhd is in Isa. So, awlattahu min ghayra ab wa ataytahu al-bayyanat wa ayyattahu baruh al-qudus. And when it comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so much more is said in the dua. One of the things that Allah does with these people is ahbatta alayhim malaikatak. You send your angels to them. Rafattahum bi'ilmik. You support them with your knowledge. وَجَعَلْتَهُمُ الذَّرِيعَةَ أَوْ ذَرَائِعِ إِلَيْكِ You make them some means, some vasilas, something that people by referring to them can come to you. Okay. In Dua Nudbah, this is mentioned for the prophets. But it begins with awliya, which is more general than the prophets. In the ziyara of Lady Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, we have something similar. Ya mumtahana, imtahana killahu alladhi khalaqake qabla an yakhluqake. O the one who is tested and tried by God. Of course, every human being is tested by God. But, the test of Lady Fatima was a great test because the position that she was going to have is a great position. So for that, she had to go through most difficult tests. Something that needed great patience. There was no possibility of passing those tests without patience. Therefore we say, فَوَجَدَكَ لِمَمْتَحَنَكَ صَابِرَةً So what was the key of the success for Lady Fatima? Patience. And by this you realize that that test was a very difficult test. It was not only about knowledge. It was not only about, for example, I don't know, purity of the heart. It was a very big test which needed sabr, which needed patience. And you know, patience is very important. As sabr min al-iman bi manzilat al-ra'as min al-jasad. It's like head for body. You cannot survive without having head. If you lose your hands, your legs, still you can survive. If you lose your eyes, you can survive. But if your head is cut off, if you are beheaded, then you cannot survive. The same is with patience. So the lady Fatima Salamullah alayha was patient and therefore she passed the test. When did Allah know this? Gabla an yakhluqake. Allah, before creating Lady Fatima, knew about her patience, knew about her loyalty to the covenant. Therefore, Allah raised her and elevated her, gave her very a special position that, inshallah, I mention a little bit about that position. Waza'amna anna lake awliya. And we believe that we are your followers. We love you and follow you. We are your awliya. We are lovers and followers of the lady. Not just loving, loving and following the lady. We acknowledge musaddiqun. We Confirm and acknowledge the position that you have with God. You cannot be a true follower of Lady Fatima without being patient. Because whenever you want to follow someone, you have to resemble that person in the qualities that that person has. I cannot follow a scholar by being ignorant. 
I cannot follow a pious person by being not pious. If we are awliya, if we are followers of Lady Fatima, whose main achievement was sabr, we have to be also sabr. We have to be patient. But what type of patience is this? Sabirun likul ma atana bihi abuk sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa vasiyuhu. We need such a patience that we can follow the Prophet and Imam Ali in everything that they have brought us, they have taught us, they have asked us to do. It's not easy to be a good Muslim. It's easy to claim. But to be a good Muslim, to be a good Shia in this age and time is not easy. You have to watch everything of yourself. You have to watch your words, your actions, your thoughts, your time, your friends, your attachments, your affiliations, everything you have to watch. This needs patience. But if we have this patience, then we can claim that we are friends and followers of Lady Fatima. And then what can you expect? You can expect from the lady to let you join the Prophet and Imam Ali. If you want to join the Prophet and Imam Ali, if you want to benefit from Nubuwa and Imama, the key is in the hand of lady. إِنْ كُنَّا صَدَّقْنَاكْ إِلَّا أَلْحَقْتِنَا بِتَسْدِيغِنَا لَهُمَا So if we are honest, if we are truthful in following you and acknowledging your position, so we request you, please enable us to join Muhammad and Ali صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. So sometimes we think, that we have to first believe in the Prophet and believe in Imam Ali and then finally we reach Lady Fatima. But it seems that from a spiritual perspective, if you want to get closer to the Prophet and Imam Ali, you have to go through Lady Fatima. The main holder of Velaya is the lady. She lets you to go to the Prophet or Imam Ali. Illa al you let us join them. If Lady Fatima says to Allah that this person is a true follower of me, then Allah would definitely accept. You know that Allah never questions anything decided by Lady Fatima. Sunni and Shia have said, If Lady Fatima says, I am pleased with this person, Allah will not question that. So if you can please the lady, everyone is pleased with you. The Prophet is pleased with you, Imam Ali is pleased with you, and Allah is pleased with you. And she is a lady, she is a mother. She is full of love. If we cannot please Lady Fatima, we cannot please anyone. We are useless. This is the opportunity that we have. And if this happens, if through lady we are connected to the Prophet and Imam, then you can be relaxed. Then you can say, Alhamdulillah, I have become successful. Then you can give this Bashara, this good news to yourself that Alhamdulillah, with the Velaya of Lady, I have become pure. Because the whole point in our life is to become pure. The Prophet has come to purify us. him. How can we be pure? We need to be pure by following pure people. The people that who are purified by Allah. Velaya is to follow pure people. If the lady accepts us and lets us join the Prophet and Imam Ali, then we can say Alhamdulillah. 
before reaching that point, we have to be worried. Because it's something that if you don't achieve, no other achievement works. If this tahara, if this purity of heart is not achieved, nothing works. It's only this purity that helps. So, as Imam Kazim salam said to Hisham, this is something that a person who has understanding, who thinks, who is agil, would find it very easy to implement, to practice. Not to go after dunya. Go after something which is endurable. And this is the thing which has worked for the friends of God, for the chosen servants of God. This is the covenant that Allah has made with them. Everything they have achieved is through this. And everything that we can achieve is also through this. By going after dunya, nothing is going to help us. It's easy to say, but very difficult to remember. And this is why we need determination. Fasbir kama sabara ulul azmi min rusul We need such a patience. Patience of the people who have great determination. Of course, that determination mostly comes from understanding. So, the lady Fatima to Zahra salamullah alayha by having this great patience managed to show her loyalty to the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah even before creating her designed for her such a position, such a high position. And inshallah by following the lady then we would be able to achieve purity which is the ideal in our life. And I end with this beautiful hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, which is mentioned in Tafsir Qummi by Ali ibn Ibrahim Qummi, and the late Allama Majlisi also quotes from Tafsir Qummi. And Abi Basir and Abi Abdullah alayhi salam, Abu Basir narrates from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, قال, إن أطفال شيعتنا من المؤمنين the infants, the children, the kids of true Shia. Shi'atana min al-mu'minim is those who are true Shia. Because we don't have Shia who is not mu'min. If he is not mu'min, he is not a true Shia. Those who are true Shia, their children are brought up by Lady Fatima. And they themselves are also brought up by Lady Fatima. When they were themselves children, they were brought up by Lady Fatima. When they grow up and they have children, they are brought up by Lady Fatima. So Lady Fatima is the one who brings up the true mu'mineen. Those who really follow her. Those who seek her help. Those who seek and beg for her assistance. Not those who say, you know, I am very much aware of what to do. I know everything. I have studied many books on psychology and you know, child psychology, education, and I know how to upbring my children. There is no problem in studying these things, but at the end, we have to know that what we can do is very limited. We need someone like Lady Fatima to come and help us so that we can make sure that our generations our next generation, our children are brought up Islamically, especially in such a time, which is very difficult. And Alhamdulillah, we are honored to be next to the Lady Fatima Ma'suma, which Allah has planned to continue the role of her mother, Lady Fatima. For some reason, Lady Fatima has to be unknown. Not only her grave is unknown, her position is unknown. No one really knows what is the position of Fatima. But Allah, alhamdulillah, has provided us with a kind of solution. And that is to go 
and visit the lady Fatima Ma'suma and benefit through her from the piety and light of lady Fatima to Zahra. May Allah inshallah enable us to be always at the service of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and may inshallah Ahlul Bayt accept us uh, as their true followers. May Allah increase our love and knowledge and understanding of himself and his chosen servants. May Allah forgive all the mu'mineen, all who have rights upon us, all the ulama and great marajah, and the late Imam Khomeini, whose birthday was also today. May Allah heal all the brothers and sisters who are ill, and may Allah make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin.